1968 in August. Previous to this time, some of our folks from Woodmont made a survey out in this area, discovered some 30 people who said, yes, we're interested. And so a meeting was held in all the Baptists in the Brentwood area. There were 23 people who actually came to the meeting, meeting with members from Woodmont at the children's home on Franklin Road, discussed the starting of a mission. But I think it's tremendous when we think of the progress that's been made and that when the time did come, in God's own time, that a church was needed here in this very location where you are today. My dad I was pastor at Woodmont Baptist. He was the first pastor starting in 1941 when that church, when Woodmont first started. And he knew or he felt the Lord telling him that Brentwood was going to become a major place to live. When we were first meeting at the children's home, it looked like a small town Baptist church. We had our little choir. We had, um, we you know, we had our we had our pews, and um, it was very traditional. Then the Holy Spirit starts moving in all of us, all of these people, the, the charter members who had been there, and the rest of us who had come a little bit later. So they found some land. Then we started thinking about, okay, when are we gonna build? Because we've got the land, when are we gonna build? It was a wonderful, wonderful time. When we moved to 409, it, we, that small town feel was still there in that uh, the first building that we built was not uh, a worship center, but a gymnasium. There, there were a lot of little, little joyous things when you look back on it that, that were fun back then that uh, the Lord allowed us to do. And, and, then, and, and we kept growing. You and I are living stones. Our life alone, separated, segregated apart from other Christians, is not going to make any impact upon the great needs of a world like ours. But together, merged together in the fellowship of God's church, by the grace and power of God, there is no limit to the resurrection power that God can exert through His church and through His people. I remember when the search committee came from Brentwood over to our other church, and I was not very happy to see them because we were so happy in place we were and we just built a sanctuary, but it seemed that that's what God wanted us to do. Bill was a good pastor teacher. He was the perfect guy that God brought here for the growth of the church in those, in those early days. He had a passion for people as well as a passion for missions. If you met Bill for very long, you were his new best friend. He tried to find out what your strengths were, how they could be plugged into the church. Bill was here at a great time for building and forming a foundation for the church. And then Mike was great to build on that foundation and have the vision to where God could lead the congregation. You and I are going to have to remember who we are and who we are called to be here in Redwood. You are the missionaries. And it may be sitting at a desk somewhere. It may be sitting at your home where you share the gospel. But it doesn't matter how or where you are the missionaries. When Mike came, uh, the biggest difference that initially that we saw was Bill stood behind the pulpit uh, and Mike walked from one side to the other. And people came out of the first time Mark, Mike preached here and said, how do you keep up with him? He's all over the stage. I think Bill was a peaceful, uh, loving, uh, that kind of person. And I think Mike is one of the best preachers I've ever heard. The difference has been evident, but there's a place for both. This was what God had called him to do. And then the gradual acceptance, he was comfortable. And so we were comfortable with him and with his leadership. The point of this effort is not to build a building, but to build the church that is inside that building, to build the people that will literally become the World Mission Center 
from which people are brought into a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and then sent out to share that knowledge, to share that relationship with people in Brentwood and Nashville and Tennessee and literally around the world. They had a team that was out looking for the land and uh, they, they looked and looked and looked and they couldn't find it, you know, any that was suitable. And the road here on Concord Road, nobody knew that was for sale. The son of a woman came into the church and says, look, I have some property my mom wants to sell, but she only wants a church built on it. And so she came in and, and that's the property that they looked and looked and looked. The Lord brought him in and that was the land. I went to Mike, I said, Mike, what are you, are you, have you lost your mind? He said, no, I haven't. The Lord's leading me to say we need that land over there. And I said, well, I said, how am I gonna argue with you saying the Lord's leading you? I said, I won't argue with that. I remember having a conversation with Mike away from just, we ran into each other, I think at the Y. And I asked him, you know, why we gotta move? And he, he said, it doesn't really matter where we are. And the first time I ever heard him say this was not at the pulpit. He said, you know, church is not a building. The church is the people. And we're the same people, whether we're at 409, or whether we're at 77, 77. And I know when I first started talking about our church needs to move and find new property, many of you spit coffee over tables when I was talking with you. And now with three worship services, over 2,000 on any given weekend, you're beginning to see and feel firsthand the, the, the potential and the power that God is placing in Brentwood Baptist Church. The Scope of Admissions uh, was really looking at what Bill and Creeley had, had so well built up on a foundation of missions and what that could look like. And it really just transferred as the church grew, it just kind of grew in that, in that mold and in that foundation. They provided for us the footprint of what it would look like as we are today. I heard about this church in Cape Town, South Africa that was doing some radical and some brave things. My thought was, I want our people to be around these people. So this was a church of about 400 that had this God-sized vision. So I came back and started talking about Living Hope. And so in 2003 is when we sent our first team. And as an organization, Living Hope has continued to grow and thrive, and I believe they've taught us a lot. They're thankful for what we've given them, but they have taught us so much as well. And our partnership with Living Hope was instrumental in helping our pastor develop a vision of the Middle Tennessee Initiative. The Lord told me himself, this is your name. chosen, beloved, beautiful, warrior, wise, child, son, daughter. This is your name. Back in the early 2000s, it didn't really seem like there were churches that were doing young adult ministry in a way that really spoke to young adults. So when a group of young adults brought that idea to Mike Len, uh, he was on board. There was just this air of excitement that each week we were hearing um, new songs that we had heard on the radio. We were hearing um, just this amazing different style of preaching than Mike had on Sunday mornings. Um, his, his relational aspect, it was like he was talking straight to anybody who was in that congregation. As the scope of the organization grew with the addition of other campuses and with um, Mike's vision for Middle Tennessee and all that entailed, uh, he just couldn't give the attention to Kairos that he wanted to. One of the most healthy transfers of leadership uh, that I've ever seen is when Mike said, I don't think I can do this anymore. I love this ministry, but I can't do it like I have been, and we need to find a new teaching pastor for Kairos. It was such a beautiful show of that transfer of leadership when Mike Glenn basically handed over the keys to the car to Chris and washed his feet and prayed for him and said, you're going to do it the right way for this next generation of people who are attending Kairos. 
So we began to discuss what would happen if we started a church in this area. And out of those discussions and out of those prayers, about 50 families joined Jay and Tanya and we started the church Station Hill. And you're now part of that result of what has started and now what has come to fruition. We started to meet at the South Campus, um, which was subsequently named Station Hill. We just felt like God was um, perfectly situating us with a pastor who lived in that area, who had a, a call from the Lord to, to go and start this new work. We launched in uh, the lunch room of Heritage Middle School. Uh, we've only stayed there a few months though. We had already identified a lease space right behind Kroger Marketplace. It was a build out right next to a preschool. Uh, we were able to use the preschool facilities and have our worship services uh, in the build out. So right around Easter of that year, we moved in. Uh, and it was a glorious time. Uh, God was bringing uh, people to us. Uh, the Lord was, was blessing uh, the efforts uh, at the church at Station Hill. And so we knew we had to start looking for land. We were about as large as we knew we were going to be. Um, the wise folks that, that uh, made those long-term plans for us had kind of said, you know, at some point we've got to consider like, maybe we don't need to be bigger as a facility. Um, that doesn't mean that we need to let that limit the growth of God's church. The reality is then we were feeling what Mike would later express as the Middle Tennessee Initiative. From the Kentucky line on the north to the Alabama line on the south, from Dixon on the west to Lebanon on the east, that quadrant, uh, that chunk of Middle Tennessee, is going to be where we're going to begin to spend more and more of our time and more and more of our effort. Why? Because there are lost people in Middle Tennessee. There are thousands of lost people. They're coming here from all over the world. They're coming here from all over the nation. Who we will be as a church, who we will be as a people, 10 years, 15 years out, is being decided, determined by the decision we make right now. Well, I, I think the way we're going is good. I think the Lord's blessed it. Uh, I can see a lot of churches that are hurting. Uh, a lot of churches are dying. And I think we have some things and the Lord's given us the ability to help those. So I think that's a great, great thing. Now where it's going, it's almost as overwhelming to think about it as it was when we first started to build this campus here. I think Mike's vision says, as we begin to establish other churches and help the weaker churches, that uh, it's amazing how many kinds of people we're reaching right now. When you walk in here, and it's always been this way, even when building here, you knew this was where the Lord was. You knew this is where things were happening for the kingdom. Um, it's always been a very servant-minded church. It's always been um, concerned about missions and worship. I pray that we'll look back 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and say, look what the Lord did. Isn't He amazing? And isn't it amazing that He chose us to be involved in it, that He chose us to be used to accomplish those goals? It's really wonderful to think about how God has worked these years. I call it God's miracle because I was in the choir when they had 10 people. Oh, we've got a big choir today. Or a prayer meeting. Hey, we've got 15 people that came tonight. And uh, everything was small in numbers. And yet I read Mike's reports and it's wonderful what God has done and is doing. And I'm so glad that I can be here still and see some of it happening. More and more of you are going to be the missionary. It's going to take everything about you right now. There's never been a better time to be on mission for Jesus Christ. What are you going to do now? What's the next step for you? All of this we'll use for His glory and for His honor. We will go forward from this hour using this building to reach people for Christ, to show forth His great power, and to show others, as the Bible says, how God has called us and has called them out of darkness into His wonderful.